Hey videographers, after I posted my loves and hates video for the Fujifilm X-S10, Don Garamarco asked if I do a best settings video. So if you don't have time to read the manual and fiddle around, here's a quick start guide for video novices. You and Don will be on your way in about 10 minutes. And then, if you have time to stick around, I'll share my preferred settings, my favorite hacks, and some advanced tips, including how to use F-Log. Now, I'm starting with the XS10 reset to the default settings using firmware 1.0. If you need to do a reset, you can reset just the video settings or the whole camera. I'm starting with the XF 16 to 80 millimeter lens, one of the kit options. Fuji's MKX series cinema lenses are better for pro video production. I'll switch to this lens later. The XS10's bit rates can use up memory cards quickly, so get large and fast cards. I'm using UHS-2 64 gigabyte cards, also called V30. They're rated for 300 megabytes per second. That provides about 40 minutes of record time. Using an external recorder is also an option. I'll cover that in the advanced section. Uh, I'm using an Atomos Ninja Inferno to record the screens that you'll see in this video. And I'll apologize that they're all slightly cropped. It's a problem with all Fujifilm models in video mode. After you've backed up any information on the card, even if it's a new card, format. Use button settings to confirm that touch screen is on. Use screen setup to set the view mode for shooting. Leave it at eye sensor if you're shooting with the viewfinder. However, if you're using a tripod, and particularly if you're rotating the screen forward for vlogging, set it at LCD only. That prevents it from switching to the viewfinder if something gets near it. Then select large indicators mode for the LCD. That will make the settings easier to see. Turn the mode dial to video. And the menu now defaults to the video options. Set the shooting dial to manual, but don't panic, we're not really going full manual. Uh, turn the back dial to set the shutter speed to 60. Press the ISO key on top and confirm the ISO is set at auto. That's going to automate our exposure. The 16 to 80 millimeter lens doesn't, but if your lens has an OIS switch, turn it on. If your lens is auto aperture, turn it off. If your lens has a marked aperture, turn it to f4. Use power management to adjust the auto power off so the screen doesn't power down as quickly. Performance boost on improves focus speed, and the boost setting can improve visibility in low light settings. The movie settings are nearly all independent of stills. The changes you make here apply only to video. There are a few exceptions, none are important. While you're in video mode, changes you make to these settings are saved so that when you return to stills, your previous still settings return and then ditto when you switch back to video. Take advantage of this camera by shooting in 4K. Even if your final output is HD, 4K gives you additional flexibility to pan and zoom in editing and better quality. A 16 by 9 is the standard video resolution for TV and computer screens. We'll get to DCI and cinema later. And unless you're shooting for cinema, use a frame rate of 30, nominally 2997, and the highest data rate, 200 megabits. 30 is the frame rate in North America and other places, but the frame rate in many countries is 25. You may choose to use that to maintain compatibility with TV sets. Before recording, the screen shows the amount of recording time available on the card. Scroll down to the 4K output setting. The XS10 can record internally, but also supports external recordings using the HDMI port. There is an option to record only externally. Make sure the SD card is at 4K. Use the menu's AF-MF tab and confirm continuous AF. 
set video AF mode to area so you can set the focus point. Multi is full autofocus. Move the joystick to activate focus selection. Set the size of the focus spot with the rear dial and position it for the shot. The disc back key resets to the center. If you are shooting people, scroll down to turn face detection on I use I auto. If your aperture dial isn't marked, set it now. Turn the front dial until the screen displays F4. If your screen display looks crowded and cluttered, use Setup Screen Setup to change the display custom settings. I find it useful to have the electronic level on as well as the histogram. And remove those items you won't need. Note that these options apply to both stills and video. I use F4 as a default aperture, but you may wish to open it if the scene is dark and your lens supports a wider aperture, or close it to F11 or F16 if it's bright, or if you feel that a defocused background is distracting or undesirable for your shot. If the scene looks dark or bright, use the back dial on the right to set the exposure compensation. It works with auto ISO. For manual ISO, press the key and turn the dial until the histogram is centered, which requires a little back and forth as the histogram isn't displayed while the ISO is adjusted. Uh, then back off one or two. Uh, that should give you a meter reading on the screen left uh, about zero. But because the meter is multi, let your eye play a role and feel free to exercise your creativity. The image on screen should look good to you. The meter is not the boss of you. <laughs> Incidentally, you can adjust ISO as well as aperture while recording. And at this point, you may run into a problem. If the scene is too dark after you've opened the aperture all the way, add lights or get a small boost by setting the shutter to 1 30th as long as there's not a lot of movement. Now, if it's too bright and you've closed the aperture or you want to keep the background out of focus, an ND filter gets the exposure under control. Press the small key beside the viewfinder to set the white balance. Now, it doesn't matter which white balance you choose as long as it looks good to you. Just don't use one of the three auto settings as it makes editing difficult. Turn the top left dial and select a film simulation. Uh, my default on the XS10 is Classic Chrome as it provides a softer, more subdued look instead of the crispy, saturated video look you'll get with Provia or Velvia. But be your own cinematographer and select a setting based on your taste and judgment and the needs of the scene. I'll get to Eterna and Eterna Bleach Bypass in the Advanced section. Now, if you want black and white, select it here using either standard monochrome or the Acros Film Simulation. Use the mono color tone adjustment to add a sepia or a blue tone to your footage. The audio default settings with the internal mics should be fine for ambient sound recording and for speaking to camera as long as you're close. My preference is an external mic. I'm shooting this scene with a shotgun on a boom. The meters, screen left, don't appear on the large display, so I've switched back to standard. When they're always above the midpoint, going into yellow and flashing red, go to the menu's audio tab. Change the mic level using the meters as reference. A slightly too low is better than high, as it's easier to turn the volume up if it's quiet than to reduce distortion if it's loud. The XS10's audio controls are quite sophisticated. You might also want to take advantage of the line level input to connect to an audio console, and there are wind and rumble filters. The USB-C port can output audio to headphones using the included adapter. And even if you don't use it while recording, it's useful for playback. While you're shooting, use touch or the joystick to guide the focus, moving the focus rectangle to your preferred subject.
In the top right, there's a button that controls the touch focus. The AF setting will focus, area sets the area. Shot starts recording when you tap in, or press the shutter to record. Either way, press the shutter to stop. And now you're ready for your shoot. Uh, I do have one advanced setting that everyone should be aware of, and that's the movie optimized control. Turn it on using the bottom right button. Uh, it disables all of the physical controls. Touch the on-screen button to access them, and then navigate up and down to the setting you want to adjust. If you have a few more minutes, let me start the advanced section. Uh, first, let me introduce the Fujinon MKX 18-55mm T 2.9 lens. Uh, Fujifilm also makes an identical 50-135mm lens. Both are made in Japan. Uh, this lens is bigger, heavier, and more expensive than the camera, but it operates like a professional cine lens because that's what it is. And all of its controls are fully manual. It includes its own tripod foot, and the camera hangs off the back. Now there are three large marked manual dials, each with teeth to use with follow focus controls for rig mounted operation. From front to back, a defined travel linear focus ring marked in metric and imperial. Now a cine lens is parfocal. This means that once the focus is set, for a specific distance, which is typically done by zooming in all the way and then focusing, the focus will not change until the distance between the subject and the lens does. While other lenses may breathe while zooming or may have a slightly different focus point from a wide shot to a tight shot, a cine lens does not. The second ring sets the focal length with a quarter turn travel, so you won't have to move your hand while zooming. Uh, note that all the action is internal. And aperture, marked in t-stops, which, although they are similar to f-stops, measure the amount of light transmitted, not the size of the aperture. This capability makes it possible to change lenses while shooting a scene and use the same exposure settings, enabling the editor to cut from a wide shot recorded with one lens to a tight shot without a change in exposure between the two shots. On this lens, there are no defined stops as the aperture is adjusted. It changes seamlessly throughout the aperture range. One of the advantages of a linear defined travel focus ring is the ability to create a smooth and organic rack focus, changing from one subject to another. Your focus puller turns the ring, and referencing to the distance markings can always return to the exact focus for that subject. Incidentally, the XS10 does have a linear focus setting providing a very similar feature with other lenses in manual mode. If you don't have an MKX lens or a focus puller, the XS10 has the next best thing. Uh, touch AF, upper right indicate that it's on. It racks focus to another subject when you touch. This is the zero speed setting. Use AFC Custom to adjust the speed. They range from fast, which is fast, to slow, or should I say slow? <laughs> the range is wide enough that it should suit any situation. Incidentally, the speed control only takes effect after you start recording. The other AFC custom setting controls the sensitivity to change. When it's set to locked on, the focus stays with the subject. When it's set to quick, the focus changes to new objects appearing in the scene. I prefer to use manual focus, a setting that's selected in the menu. Uh, the MKX lens only supports manual focus, auto can't be selected. Turn focus check on. Then, as soon as you turn the focus ring, the expanded view appears. You can do this while recording. The expanded view isn't recorded. Use the back dial to change the magnification, the focus joystick to position, and the focus ring to focus. To reset to the full image, 
press the back key. As some videographers prefer peaking as a focus assist, use the menu to set the color and sensitivity you prefer. The colored lines indicate the object in focus. With a cine lens, you may wish to go all in on your cinematic aspirations, and the XS10 can accommodate that. Switch the video settings to 4K DCI 17x9, the cinema production aspect ratio, and 24 frames per second, the same frame rate used in motion picture film cameras and projectors. And just to show you that Fujifilm hasn't missed any detail here, purists can set the shutter speed to the exact 180 degree shutter used in motion picture film cameras, 1 over 48. However, there's not much value in using these settings unless your video will be projected at 24 frames. For a cinematic look, concentrate on lighting. Now, we've already talked about the histogram, but cinematographers like to revert to zebra for exposure. It's on screen too. Choose left or right. Setting it to 100% will alert you to any parts of the scene that exceed 100 on a waveform to keep your recordings broadcast legal. However, it's also useful to set it to 70%, as that's the usual setting for white skin, then adjust the ISO accordingly. My zebra hack to turn it on and off quickly is to assign it to a function key. Now, as long as we're being fussy, let's set a custom white balance, which is simple. Uh, select one of the three custom positions, press right, and aim at a gray or white card. Adjust the size if needed. Press the shutter, and then OK. Done. With the classic chrome simulation, I use the tone curve, adjusting the highlight setting to minus two, as well as the shadow to minus two for a less contrasty image. The opposite increases contrast. And then the sharpness to minus four to reduce the crispy look typical of video. Now again, this is personal preference. I find this a good neutral starting point for color adjustments while editing. The XS10 will stop recording when 30 minutes has elapsed. Now you can start recording again immediately. But note that the recording time is much shorter with the high frame rate, about three minutes. And when it reaches the limit, the camera just stops. I'd appreciate an audible indication. There will always be a challenge shooting on sunny days where scenes may have a very wide dynamic range. So with standard settings, I can choose to expose properly for the sky at T22, or if I want to see the detail on the bridge, open to T8. The eight stops or so of range available with standard means it's one or the other. Let's go to the Eterna Cinema Film Sim. Fujifilm suggests you increase the dynamic range to 400 to achieve the optimum results with this simulation. That means a minimum ISO of 640. You'll want an ND filter to manage scenes like this. And that restores some detail in the sky. The Eterna Bleach Bypass Film Sim provides a variant on this. However, if you are planning to do a color grade in your edit, you'll likely prefer the former. To manage an even larger dynamic range and get that sky under control, there's F-Log, which overrides film simulations and many of the other image controls. When shooting with F-Log, keep your histogram centered. This is F-Log as it comes from the camera. You'll need to apply a lookup table adjustment, usually called a LUT, and color grade this footage in post. Uh, remember that for now, most displays can only handle six to eight stops. Let me do a quick demo and tutorial. With standard settings and exposing to center the histogram, this studio lit shot of the DSC Labs Cameline chart has about eight stops of range, as do most objects that reflect light. And you can see on the waveform, it's just short of 100 units. 
When I switch the scene to F-Log, it looks washed out on the screen. And on the waveform, you can see that the 8-stop scene has been compressed to about 60% of its original dynamic range. That's great, as it allows a greater overall range to be captured. Applying Fujifilm's LUT restores some of the dynamic range, and I can grade it further, but some of the mid-range gradation is gone. So, my recommendation is to use F-Log only when you're seen, because your shooting outside in sunlight requires. Uh, then, of course, sample and experiment so that you have the exposure and the grading you're going to do in post figured out. One more thing, if you're shooting F-Log, use the screen setup to turn on F-Log View Assist so the display on the LCD won't be so washed out. No, sorry, two more things. <laughs> if you're recording on an external recorder, download and install the Fujifilm LUTs for the display. Like the View Assist, they don't affect the recording, just give you a preview of what the final image will look like. For handheld shooting, the XS10's in-body stabilization can be configured in four steps. Off, which produces a predictably shaky result at 80 millimeters. In-body plus optical, as long as the lens supports it, which goes a long way to smoothing out an image. Then add digital for a shot that's nearly as steady as a tripod, but with a slight crop. And boost for an even steadier static handheld image. Note that if you're moving the camera, you should leave boost off as it adds a little jumpiness to pan. A related setting, Movie Crop, provides a 1.29 crop, which can be useful to provide a little more range to your zoom and further improve stabilization. The XS10 does not support in-camera time-lapse, but you can shoot with the stills interval timer. Set the interval in the number of images, which can be infinite, meaning until the memory cards are full. You'll have to turn the stills into video. Here's my hack for this. Use 16x9 medium and JPEG only. That provides a video aspect ratio and smaller files, but bigger than the 8 megapixels needed for 4K video. I'm using an Atomos Ninja recorder, which is connected to the HDMI port. This can record a higher quality image than the internal SD card. That's because you can use a higher bit rate and 422 color. Now, if you're using F-Log, doing color grading and creating high quality output, you'll appreciate those details. The output settings to the HDMI out, resolution and frame rate, switch when they're selected from the movie mode settings. For pro editing, time code is available with multiple options to configure to your needs. Uh, turn HDMI rec control on to use the camera's shutter release to start and stop the external recorder. Be aware, if you're also recording on SD cards when the cards fill up, it will not only stop recording internally, but externally also. And note that if you select HDMI 4K only, there is no time limit to your recordings, except of course the storage capacity on the external recorder. Now I have the info display on, but turn it off for a clean output for recording. There are multiple tally light options which indicate that the camera is recording. Lights on the front and back can glow or blink, or can be turned off completely. The XS10 can be externally powered with USB using power delivery. Although a standard charger will work, that slowly drains the internal battery. Now, there's little danger of the XS10 overheating in normal shooting conditions and temperatures, but it may happen. When I tested, I recorded 4K for over 70 minutes in a 25 degrees Celsius studio. The overheating icon appeared, but the camera didn't quit. I hope that covers it. If not, please post your relevant questions and civil comments below. I read and reply to all. And I'd love to have you join my select, well, self-selected group of subscribers. The icon makes it easy. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.